I want to talk about a few ways to pull injectors and some general safety in the process. Uh, as you see here, I've got four injectors out of this engine already, and I put a wine cork in every hole because you do not want anything falling down in there. Uh, it can sink through all the way through. Let's see if I can turn the light on. Small parts can fall through that bottom hole down there, and they're pretty much lost forever inside the cylinder unless you take the head off the engine, and that's no fun. The first way I want to talk about, I don't recommend, and that is to loosen the hold down clamp and drive the van. Uh, that can use the compression and the combustion to push the injector out. Unfortunately, with this line connected to the fuel rail, uh, as that injector comes out, you're bending this line. That's a very high pressure line. It can be above 25,000 PSI between the rail and the injector or in the fuel rail and this line. So I don't wanna flex that around, bend it up. Uh, if you do use the rocket method and send that injector out by compression, uh, replace this line afterwards. Also, the reason I don't recommend it, I have seen the damage that can do when the injector rockets out and hits the air filter, cabin air filter compartment above it. It's nasty. The next method I want to talk about is the wiggle out, and that is a deep socket, half inch. Put it on the fuel nipple over here and work it back and forth. Sometimes you can hit it with a hammer, knock it back and forth. As you can see, somebody's done that here and pushed it too far until they've dented one side and broke the other tab off. You do not want to pry on this valve cover anywhere, not on the tabs and certainly not on the lower portions down here around the injector. You will break a hole in it. It's, as you can see, thin metal. And this actually, uh, this right here that broke off is just as thick as that part. So it will break. Now, if you can't wiggle it at all, even with a hammer beating on it, you can try putting PB Blaster around it, put the van back together, drive it a couple of days, coat it with PB Blaster every couple of days and keep driving it. I've not had much success with that. I've also not had any success with the rocket method myself, but too many people have made a mess doing that. So I'm sure it works. Maybe I'm too cautious. Next method I want to talk about is the claw. This is available on Amazon and eBay. I had to modify it a little bit to get it in. Uh, that may have been on a 612. It works without modification on a 647. It gets under there and hooks into the same place that the hold down claw would. I'll put this injector here and show you how that works. It gets in right there and pulls up. With this hooked into your injector, put a heavy ass weight on it, screw that in, say a little prayer, go ahead and cut off your thumbs because it hurts less than getting them pinched in right there. And smack, smack, try to beat that thing out. I have never found this successful, others have. Finally, we're going to talk about the Hail Mary of injector pullers. This gets them all out. It does ruin the injector. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. This is kind of an optional piece here. You can get the top off the injector without this fancy socket, but that does make it a little bit easier. And this is the actual puller here. Let me show you how that works. For an OM647, well, we're going to work with the 647 first. It's pretty similar to the 612. The difference, you can see this says 612 right there. An OM647 injector will have a code, a six digit code on the bottom of it there. So we're going to take this injector apart with or without the special tool. Going to get a hold of this big nut and turn that loose. Now there's a spring in there. Remember I mentioned the wine corks? 
that spring can hop out of there and go straight down an injector hole. It ends up on top of the piston. Makes a hell of a noise when you start the motor. Don't ask me how I know. Now this little ring pops up. And it'll hopefully bring some parts with it. And we want to check very carefully underneath there and see what's stuck to it. Nothing right now. And there's several parts here. We've got this ring. This tack, if you will. And this sleeve that the tack fits into. Try not to mix those up or turn the ring over. I'm gonna go ahead and put them back in this head the way they came, containing that spring. Now down inside here, there should be a tiny little ball. It's about the size of that hole right there. And a tiny little cylinder. Looks like there's the ball stuck up here on the side. So I'm gonna try to get that down where it belongs. That should be down in the bottom of the injector here. And then the cylinder sits on top of that. The cylinder has a cup in it, so it can balance on top of that ball. And then the tack, the flat, end, flat point of the tack, if you will, is shaped kind of like a thumbtack. That thumbtack would push down on top of that cylinder. If you lose any of those tiny parts, forget about it. Your injector is not rebuildable. All right, with the ball and cylinder set aside for safekeeping somewhere where you don't lose it, because they are tiny, we're going to take this 10 millimeter stud tool, put it in there, 10 millimeter socket, and pop that loose. There we go. Then that ring comes out, set it aside for safekeeping. Once you have that collar, that locking collar out, then the tool will fit down in. Thread that in there like so. Gonna wanna turn that down as far as it'll go. And then slide this part on top of it. And finally add this part. Keep it lubricated and start cranking with a wrench. That injector is gonna work its way out ever so slowly. You will definitely find the injector, the tool gets stuck between the injector and the valve cover. Uh, that's just part of the deal. It also gets very stuck in here. Let's see if I pull this out. See, it does not want to go on there. It takes a little force. And that's just to get the tool down on the injector. So yeah, it's tight. Then it requires hammering this out. Once you get it all apart, get the injector out, spin this big nut off. Spin this big nut off and then hammer on that until the injector comes back down here where we can work on it. Now, if you've had your injector apart like this, even just had the top off of it and didn't miss anything else, it's not going to pass testing. Please don't put it back in your van. Uh, there's no wrong way to put it back together at this point, I suppose. Just don't lose the pieces. Ideally, the ball should sit in the center of the bottom there. The cylinder will sit on top of the ball and then this will go in and sit on top of the cylinder. Good luck with getting that to happen. Now, since I know that little ball isn't where it should be, I'm not gonna tighten this more than finger tight. If I crush that down with a wrench, I could be crushing that ball into where it shouldn't be. This injector kind of looks like somebody already did that. The difference between a 6 OM647 
and an OM612 injector. We're gonna pull this one open now. The spring sets up a little more proud. It should be, or could be, left inside like it was on the other one. But now this won't just pull off. You have to press down press down on this outside and then I don't know if you see that little clip in there let's see if I can open this up there's a little clip opening on the top so that it would slide down to come off of here I'm not going to do that right now because we don't need to see what's in there that badly so before I give up and take that injector apart I'm going to try to ruin it one other way or uh I guess I'm going to try to not ruin it. I'm going to try this hot rod and see if we can put some heat to that injector and pull it out. What is a hot rod, you may ask? Well, let me try to explain. About $220 on Amazon or eBay. Get this little device. It comes with these coils. You can see I've dirtied, dirtied a few of them up already. And it makes the metal hot inside that coil through a electromagnetic pulsing. How does that work? I don't know. The videos I watch claim that it uh, essentially drives the molecules crazy in the metal. I can tell you it most certainly gets hot. We bought it to remove some exhaust manifold studs. It most certainly made those studs hot, uh, glow red hot but unfortunately it did not make them any easier to remove and we still busted a bunch of them. So hopefully it'll work for injectors. This big hoop didn't seem to be big enough, uh, but it does come with a couple of wires like this so we can wrap it around any device or any metal object and make it hot that way. Wrap the metal around whatever and then plug it into there, plug it into there, hold the button down, Funky instructions, not very helpful. Some place it says two seconds on, five seconds off. Another place it says two minutes on, five minutes off. Yeah. Bad translations from Chinese. What do you expect? And so I muscled that hoop around the base of it down there. Kind of see it. Yeah, I scarred it up pretty good in the process. Made a mess. It'll be all right. Let's see if we can get it hot. Managed to work that wire around there. Hit the button and it started smoking in about 10 seconds. Now I've got all kinds of PB blaster and lubricant and WD-40 all over it. So, yeah, that's going to burn a bit. We're getting something hot, that's for sure. All right, let's see what that does. Let go of the trigger for a bit. No. So getting it hot and then letting it cool seems to have maybe done something. Yes. We are moving now.
what I'm checking is my finger would barely fit between this rail and that before, and now I can get in there and really, really wiggle. So it's moved up some. Oh, we're still moving. Button down. Here comes the smoke. I suppose that's probably hot enough, huh? Not sure how hot I can get away with. It says two minutes on, five minutes off. Another part of the manual reads two seconds on, two seconds off. I'm sorry, two seconds on, five seconds off. I'm pretty sure they mean minutes. Two seconds doesn't do a whole lot. I haven't been two minutes yet, but I'm feeling that's probably hot enough for an injector. Definitely still moving. But if I were paying myself by the hour, I'd have been smart to just go ahead and bust the injector, pull it out with the extractor a long time ago. I've been at this way more than three hours. Kind of prevent that from happening again. Put a little leash on it here. Holy shit. Not worth it, man. Not <laughs> worth it.
But in the end, I won. 